Oh, it's, we'll do it. It's new products. It's We're excellent. gonna get through this. Okay. okay. First up. We have this. Uh, this is a color form brush. This is a, a paintbrush, and it's basically uh, it was designed uh, by uh, Jay Silver with this company, and Jay Silver did the Dradio. So they made like an assembled paintbrush version of the Dradio, and it runs on a couple batteries. And it, Becky even threw a video. About yep, it. we have a quick video with Becky Stern. At Adafruit, we love any toy that promotes educational play. And so I want to show you this. It's the Color Forms Brush with Genius. It has an electronic contact down the side, holds two AAA batteries, and has a paintbrush at the end. And when you complete the circuit, it plays music. It sounds suspiciously familiar to the Draudio, and that's because Color Forms worked with our friend Jay Silver to make this fun, interactive toy. Let me show you how it works. The battery compartment is protected by a plastic plate secured with a Phillips head screw and there's a water resistant gasket in there since this is watercolor. The brush switch is on with the power button on the back which will illuminate the red LED and sound will come out of the speaker. Dip the paintbrush in water and then your favorite color. As you begin to paint, you can touch the painting with your other hand to make music. The circuit inside is detecting the resistance between the two electrodes, one on the strip held in your hand and the other one touching the paintbrush. Okay, so watch this full video on the Adafruit site on the product page for this. Now, this was uh, built in collaboration with Jay Silver, who uh, also uh, worked on the Draudio, and he worked with you on the Draudio kit. Yes, so we, we, have... we took the Draudio kit as he made it, and we, we actually, I, I wouldn't be surprised by the circuitry for the Draudio kit that we made, actually, is it the color form brush? Yeah. We, we made it run on a, a single battery and also increased the runtime and the, right. the volume, all that good stuff. And speaking of Jay, this is, I, I believe, world premiere, uh, as far as I know, on the internet. Um, talking about this on video, uh, Jay and uh, Eric uh, Rosenbaum have the Makey Makeys for sale. These are the uh, people who invented it. This is the Makey Makeys from Jay and Eric, and uh, we now have them in the Antifruit store. From Joy Labs. And basically, I guess, uh, Lady Eddie, you can explain it. I'm just going to go through a couple more pictures. Um, yeah. They, they did, by the way, they did a beautiful job with the packaging. The packaging is super cute. Um, it's fantastic. And uh, why, why don't you explain, basically, out of the box, what the Makey Makey yeah. Sure. So the Makey Makey basically acts like a keyboard or joystick. Um, you plug it in and it, it has HID and USB mode for those who are more technical. So it, it plugs in and it, it actually is based on the Arduino Leonardo core. So it's actually an Arduino at heart. And um, it uses uh, the HID stuff to basically act like a keyboard or joystick. And then it uses um, a resistive touch system. I don't know exactly why they use capacitive touch. It simply uses a resistive touch system where you hold, you know, because the human body has a resistance about like 100 kilo ohms or so, yeah. like 100, like 50, 10 kilo ohms to like a mega ohm or so. And um, the, the um, AVR, uh, it's on the board, the microcontroller, it's sensitive enough to detect uh, the, the changes by when you touch it. And so um, and the microcontroller is basically constantly polling to see uh, whether you know these six keypads have changed. And if they have, it um, sends uh, the keypad or, or key press yeah. to, um, so I guess it's by default it's a, uh, you know, ASDF and space and click or whatever. And so, yeah, it's, it's, it's very simple. And then you can extend it on the outside. There's pins on the back, so you can extend it. Yeah. You can also, of course, uh, we upload the code to it. And it's uh, uh, also uh, an Arduino. You can you also know, use yeah, it as an Arduino. Yeah, you can, you can plug it in and, and use it with Arduino 1.0. Yeah, so check it out. Um, Jay did an excellent job. Um, the uh, accessories that he included are really high quality. I really yeah. like. And uh, Jay and Eric did a fantastic job. They're a company, Joy Labs. Yep. Um, they're the inventors. Um, we are supporting the maker. Um, we got a bunch of these. This was the first thing that arrived at the new Adafruit factory. Yay. Yeah. And yeah, we'll, have, we'll have more posts and videos about it next week. We just we literally just want to get it in the store before the show today. Yeah. OK, next up, um, some quick product updates. The, we have a new bus pirate. Yeah, bus pirate got updated to um, 3.6. Yeah, I think the, the, the physical shape of it changed. Yeah. I think they may have done some bug fixes. Uh, please check out the uh, bus pirate website for, for more info. I don't, don't have time to go through all the details right now. But yeah. Check that out. And we're just going to skip ahead to some stuff. We have the, um, we sold out of these super fast. These are the aluminum milled the, cases. They're solid chunk aluminum milled cases. They're, they're a little pricey, but they are awesome. Yeah. Um, we have one with the Pi logo milled on, they got permission. Yeah. And one without. Um, yeah, they're just super cool. They're ultra durable. They're machine Yeah, they're, they're gorgeous. gorgeous. They work with the Raspberry Pi team. Uh, we have more on the way. Uh, I'm going to show you. No, we have some in sort of. Oh, did they come in? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Great. Uh, 
back up. I don't know where I am and how I got here. Hello. Okay. Um, so, uh, anyways, we have a quick little video. Um, I'm, I'm not going to show the whole thing. You can watch it later. But um, Becky introduces them. Hey guys, I'm back again today with another Raspberry Pi case. This is the Pi holder and it's milled out of a solid block of aircraft grade aluminum. Airplane? Airplane. Airplane. It's virtually indestructible and we have it in both the blank and Raspberry Pi logo varieties. It goes together really easily. Let me show you how. First, place the included plastic film and neoprene in the bottom half of the holder, followed by your Raspberry Pi with the GPIO cable, if you'd like. The top half of the case serves as a heat sink for the Raspberry Pi's heat emitting ICs and you should put okay. the okay. included thermal Next up, so you can watch the rest of that video later. Um, we also work with another company and we have these on the way right now. This is a Raspberry Pi case, once again, approved by the Raspberry Pi Foundation. Anytime the logo is used, they want people to work with them. So we're only going to stock things that uh, people, the right thing, yeah. and work with the Pi Foundation. So this is a Pi Step Together case. Yeah. Um, we'll, you know, we don't have them in stock quite yet. Uh, we'll show more about it. But, sorry, it's screwed together. The nice thing about this is it has these light pipes. Yep. So, and then um, one thing that happened, and I'm sorry about this, uh, there was a limited edition Adafruit case. Um, they sold out instantly. Like um, the Pipo folks um, made these for us. We're going to find out if we can get more made. Um, we had 50. They sold out in about 15 minutes. They sold out, yeah. Um, they're, they're, they're called the Gothy case. What? I, they're more cyberpunk. Than yeah, Gothy. they're Gothy. Okay, okay. we're going to keep going. Uh, George said we can run a couple minutes, so we're just going to keep running through. Um, as we were saying before, we're starting to shoot more videos as we're doing stuff at the Adafruit factory. Yeah. So here's a quick video that you did, Lady Ada. Lady Ada, what are you up to? Hello, we're back here in the pick and place area again, and today we're going to be uh, programming in a new board, which is always exciting here at the Adafruit back factory. Um, we're going to be doing this microphone amplifier board, so here are our nice PCBs, and uh, we have our PCBs panelized. Oh, I have to be careful. Um, so this is the uh, board, and you can see we have 30 PCBs on one plate, so we can uh, pick and place a bunch of them at a time. And this is our attack plan. So this is the export from Eagle showing what parts are where. And then we have a stencil. So all these things together, we're going to program this into pick and place, load these reels, do this up. Okay. Say hi, Andy. Hello. <laughs> All right, up. Now, here we are making them. Alright, fur it up. And here is the end result. A new product! Uh, yeah, that is how we do product before. What is it? Yeah. There was this biker thing going on. Out There's there. a motorcycle getting down the street. There yes. actually is. Okay, anyway, so, um, yeah, so this is the new product for this week. I'm trying to get out one quick up order or new design or something a week. And so this week was a uh, microphone amp. Usually I, I end up with this later in the week, but uh, as you can tell, we kind of had to do it on Tuesday. Um, so this is a really cool microphone amp. This has actually been in, uh, I've tried to be, trying, have tried to design a microphone amp board for like a couple of years now. Um, but I finally sat down and did it. And this one uses um, a really nice, I was browsing the Maxim site and I found the Max 4466. This is a, a low cost. Um, but really high quality, low noise mic amp. And so um, I looked around, a lot of people when they build electric mic amps, they just use an off amp, which there's nothing wrong with that. You can use it in a JFET or a FET input amp and, and it'll work fine. Uh, you know, uh, electric mics have a little uh, FET inside them already to do some amplification. But um, the problem is if you use uh, an amplifier that's not designed for it, you can get, um, it can be really noisy. So the nice thing about this off amp is it's specifically de designed for electric, so it has ultra, ultra, ultra high input impedance, and it's extremely, extremely low noise um, by having the, a very uh, good power supply ejection rate ratio. So the, so the thing is actually, a lot of the noise that comes in from this amp comes in from the power supply. It's not from uh, uh, the noise. It's actually because, like for example, on Arduino, it's, it's quite a noisy board. There's a lot of uh, uh, digital noise going on. But um, it is good enough to do um, with the voice changer project that uh, Phil Burgess was showing earlier in the show. and. 
So, um, yeah, he tested this amp board and he said this is like the best mic amp he's ever mm -hmm. used. And he's like, this is awesome. This makes my project work so much better. Um, so yeah, we designed a really uh, good amp board. It tried to make it small, tried to make it so you could sew it onto something by having these mounting holes. And on the back, you can see also we have a, um, a little, the silver thing in the, near the out pin is the trip pot. And so uh, when you're connecting this to something that's expecting line out, you can turn it down, and so you'll get about 200 millivolts peak to peak. Um, and that's really good for when you want to connect a line in, because you don't want to, um, if, if it's too much, it'll, uh, you'll have problems because it'll, yeah. um, the signal will be too high. It'll, uh, the word I can't even remember anymore. Uh, and then if you turn it all the way up, you can have about a volt and point, volt point two, volt and a half, whatever, peak to peak. I mean, of course, if you're screaming or clapping, it'll, it'll, it'll go all the way up to three volts yeah. or whatever. I think Phil's example kind of shows like kind of all the cool stuff. Yeah. yeah. I'd say it's good for like, if you want to use it for line in or you want to use it for my controller. It, it, yeah. I, I put the pot on there to adjust so you can have yeah. uh, both options. It's super cool. Anyways, we'll have more projects with yeah. this. Yeah, and we're also selling... Um, Just the electric mic. It's a 20, mic 20, it's a 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz, so it's a nice wide range. So, uh, yeah, and the, and the mic amp board yeah. also has the same range. Okay, let's keep going. It's good. You put these in. Yeah, these are super adorable. Somebody emailed and said, hey, these are really cool. You should contact the company and carry them, and we did. And they said yes, and so we bought a bunch. Um, these are ultra miniature uh, one amp uh, buck converters. You can give them like five to 30 volts or something like that. Check the data sheets. I don't, I don't know about that top of my head. And it'll give you one amp at 3.3 volts or five volts. Uh, no heat sink, no air cooling required, and they're completely potted and like waterproof and all that good stuff. So you can just plug them in and go. They're the easiest way to build a yeah. supply. Um, this one isn't coming soon. It's not in the don't out. It's not out yet, but you can sign up for it now. So uh, we have our Laws of Robotics poster. They're being made as we speak right now. Um, they're in the store. You can sign up. Um, this is limited edition. We're doing 100 to start. So this is first run. And it quotes uh, Asimov's uh, Laws of Robotics. Okay. Uh, okay. That, that was, was new products. That was new products. That was a race.